I got a call from my auntie church, and they said they're doing um, baptisms tonight. I said, oh, my Lord. So on Friday night, I got baptized for the first and only time. <laughs> and I'm so proud of myself because I'm not a water person. And when I went under that water and came back up, I can't even explain it. If you ain't done it, if you haven't done it, all I can say is you got to do it in order to know how I felt when I came back up. It was like I was reborn. And I just started to think about all the little things that get on my nerves. They seem so teeny. Like you was wasting all this precious time on foolishness like that. But it took me to be reborn Come on to now. know that the things that we hold on to and the things that we think about on a daily basis that trouble us, it's so petty and little. You make it so big, it's really not. But at the moment, when the devil got his half his hand over your eyes, you can only see half of what's going on. He making you think that that's it's okay. It's okay to be like that. It's okay to, it's okay to be unforgiving. It's okay to be mad at somebody. It's okay to, you know, take something, uh, what you say, mountain of molehill, and make it to a mountain or something or another. Y'all know how that saying go. I just don't know where to go. But this is what I do know. When I came up. I promise y'all I was standing there waiting like this, petrified, like, because I got to go under this water, and I'm scared. And I was like, I got my earplugs in, I got my wet hair thing on, my ears was covered. Y'all know, I went under that water and forgot to close my mouth. So y'all can already imagine what was going on in there. My husband told me something, oh, you just need the Holy Ghost inside you too. Oh my. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, how am I drowning myself? But it was like a weight was lifted off me. I was so drained after that. It's like I heard the old people say they slain in the spirit, and they just be so like, oh, I don't know what I was slain in because I wasn't hooping and hollering and jumping around. But I think it was that mouthful of water that got me, honey. I was like, whew. I was just like, I was just so light but heavy. I can't explain it. If y'all ain't never did it, y'all don't even, y'all can't even imagine what I'm feeling right now. It's like, the best feeling ever. And I'm like, what took me so long? Come on. Because the devil had me like, oh, girl, you going under there, and whoever holding you going to slip and fall and drop you. You're going to drown. It was just all sorts of types of things. And I was standing there, and I know the man that was holding me about to take me under. I know he was like, oh, this one here is something about to come out of her because I was shaking like a leaf. Do you hear me? It was ripples in the water. I was shaking so hard. He was just like, it's okay. Watch your footing. And with that man who dipped me on that water, y'all, that's his calling. Gracefully. It won't no interruptions in that dip. I went right down. It came right back up. Real nice and smooth. It won't no hesitation because the Lord already knew. I said, Lord, if this man dropped me, Jesus, they just going to have to rebuild the church. Cause I'm going to have like the Tasmanian devil in here. The Lord said, don't worry about that. I got you. And he had me. Whew, I'm still tired. And I ain't even do nothing but get dunked under the water. And I'm still tired. I am still tired, but it's a good tired. Like, I was tired, but I was up early in the morning yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And that ain't me. I was up and out the house before 9 o'clock. I was like, what? What? I was like, oh, is this a new me? Yeah, so if y'all ain't never been baptized, all I can say is, it's amazing. Amen. Get you some of that Holy Ghost dipping is all I can say. Because... Woo, I could talk about this all day, but I'm not. I'm not going to talk about it all day. I promise y'all I'm not. But I can. How many of y'all? Let me see y'all hands. I ain't trying to put y'all on the spot. Who been baptized before? All of us have. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Did y'all feel the feeling? Because Lord have mercy. I ain't even, okay. I, I feel like I'm exaggerating. I promise you. When I was on Facebook, I know these people say, this girl crazy. It was like I was like in a a little baby in the fetal position, and I know I won't. And it was just like everything was, it was light. It was like with my eyes closed, it was the brightest thing. I was like, oh, my gosh, what's happening to me? It was like the light at the end turn. I was like, Jesus, is I'm going right now? I was, I was kind of confused, but it was very, very bright. But my eyes was closed. I can't, I can't explain it. It's just the best feeling. Amen. So if y'all haven't done it, please do it. 
And just know that all the little things y'all going through in the daytime, the nighttime, the weeks, the months, if you're holding grudges, if you don't like somebody, unforgiveness, I'm telling you, listen, 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 listen. I can't even tell you. I'm like this here. <sighs> what? Did I waste my time? Yes. Oh, my Lord Jesus. I was like, and you can't get that time back, honey. You just can't get it back. You got to press forward and move forward, honey. I'm going to tell y'all what. It's a new day, a new dawn. Because, look, everything is brighter to me now. No more cloudy days unless, Amen. you know, we have this bipolar weather. You know how that goes. But in my life, it's not going to be. I'm not wasting another minute, Come on. not another second on the devil playing with my mind. That's what he was doing. I'm like, mm, mm. Yep. Did he have me in a hole so tight? And I didn't even think the hole was that tight. Because I'm like, uh uh, I know how to do what I want to do when I want to do it. I done got rid of that, you know, 90% of that mentality. It's still like 10%. I'm like, girl, you just got baptized. You can let it go. So it's much easier now for me to let it go. Chloe. It's much easier for me to let it go. Because when I tell you I can, I can hold a grudge. It's like your skin to your bones, honey. I'm telling you. I was like, the Lord said you got to let it go. You got to let Amen. it go. You don't got one step closer to going to heaven. Ain't no devil in hell or no none of y'all walk around here going to interrupt my getting on up there with the Lord. I'm trying to get up there. Because if this is any indication what the world is going through right now, it's what it's going to be when he come back and the folks that's left behind. I know you lying. I don't want no part of that. Amen. I'm going on to the glory house. I don't know my mom up there talking something. Whoa! Oh, she cut one. She cut one Friday. Oh, she cut one Friday. The Lord probably had to say, "Sit down, Linda. Sit down. Sit down." Because her husband already in the background. He was like, "I said, Lord, if he sing any louder, Jesus, he gonna open up the gates and let me right on in." He was excited. I was like, <laughs> I was like, who was this man singing while I'm getting back? It was him. I was like, okay, he was excited for his wife. Listen. That was nothing short than a miracle. And Amen. if y'all know me, then y'all know that I don't play with water. Uh-uh. But that one right there, it was nice and warm. It was like they had gave me a bath. I was washed clean. I don't understand that y'all don't understand how I'm feeling right now. It was like I was just all, all everything, everything. I was like, oh, I was being real like that. He showed me, look, this is how the devil had you, and you thought you was, he didn't. You thought he had like a light hand, or he had a whole power grip on you. And it didn't feel like, because he was making it seem like, oh, you in control, but he really in control. You know how us women think, yeah, I'm going to let him think that. But the whole time, he in control, but you think you in control? That's how I was. And now I can see that, oh, my gosh, all that time I wasted, I cannot get back. But he won't get not no more of it. I can promise you that one. Come on now. He won't get not another another second of my time being play, playing with him. I ain't playing with him no more. I ain't Come playing on. with the devil Amen. no more. Playtime is game over. Checkmate. It's over. It is over. So that was my how my weekend went. Yeah, that's how my weekend went. And it's still carrying over to the day, y'all. So I ain't mean to take up a lot of y'all time, but I just thought maybe that y'all might need to hear that because in, I got friends that ain't heard from in years was like, praise the Lord. I didn't know how to take that. I was like, you mean praise the Lord? Like, thank you or praise the Lord. That devil is free. Because <laughs> I, I was a mean person back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So when they saw the dip, they was like, well, maybe I got a chance. You know, the, the grace of God has put grace on her. And she can put grace on me. It's over. It is over. Playtime is over with the devil. I am so done with him right now. Now, I will say this. The Lord's still working on me now. He is still working on me. But he can work on me as a free woman now. Come on now. That's he can work better. on me as a free woman and not partial. Like, oh, the devil still got his hands on me. Did she know this? Like, he, he let me see that. Look, in due time, in due time, God will show you everything. And I'm just like, I got this. I'm doing this. I'm with the Lord. I'm with it. And the whole time, he had his hand like this. Just politely guiding me slowly, not enough that I can see that he would guide me, but he was. He was, and I feel like a fool. But, you know, the Lord take care of babies and fools. That's all I'm going to say. So, you know, hey, his grace and mercy. Amen. So, before I get into the prayer, I want to, um, before I got baptized, they was playing 
these two songs that I'm going to give y'all today. Um, and the first one is, Oh, It Is Jesus. And I knew in the church that I was in, I was kind of nervous because I didn't go to that church. But you know, they're good people. But the, the lineup, Pastor Holden, your nephew going to play it. He going to play the whole thing for me. The, the lineup, the, 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 it was coming through the speakers, and I was like, it was just like my mama's favorite songs. And I'm like, what? And I kept tapping my door. I was like, girl, this is mama's song. This is mama's song. And I know she was up there cutting up. Um, What's your nephew's name? Tyrese. Tyrese, can you play that song for me? So y'all just listen to this, because I don't know if y'all going to feel it the same way I feel it. But I'm going to tell y'all what. They was playing this song while I was sitting in there rocking the pew off the off the floor because I was so nervous. And these songs just let me know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right until I got up and down like this. Y'all listen to this. Oh, y'all know this song. Old spiritual hymns, but back in the day, church music. That's what I like right here. Uh, we need to bring back. Yes. Can you turn it up, Tyree? church one time one time okay so we're gonna have our opening prayer by me look i'm on the road today y'all got me up here talking and praying what 
I told y'all. Doing it all. <laughs> when you get dipped, it, you don't know how to act. You just don't know how to act. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as humbly as we know how, Lord God. Everybody that's in this place right now, bless them, Lord. We don't know what they're going through right now. We don't know their trials and their tribulations. Only you know them, Jesus. Right now, God, I want you to just bless everybody in here. Bless who's on their way or who can't make it on today, Lord God. Bless their week that they can go through it and press on to the next day, Lord. Cover us in your blood, Lord. Put your hands around us our families, our children. God, just bless everybody in our household, everybody that's in here, everybody that's attached to this church, Lord. Bless them even if they're not in here on today because some people can't make it, Lord. Bless the sick and the shut in, Lord Jesus. Bless everybody that's on their sick bed, Lord. Don't know if they're going to make it. God, it's your will, not their will. In your precious name I pray, amen. amen. <laughs> and we're going to have our scripture by Tori. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Okay, I will be coming from John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the word gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. All right, y'all may be seated. Do we have any visitors in the house? I don't think so. Well, then I don't need to do no... No welcoming of the visitors because everybody's family on today. All right, all right, all right. Do we have any announcements other than if you need a ride, call Minister Simon for a ride on Saturday evenings before 8 o'clock at 757-236. Lord, where my glasses? 6582, I believe that's what it say. Y'all got y'all handouts. Y'all might, it might not be a 6, though. All right. And bring somebody to church, you know. Because these days are rough out here, you know, and it's our job to get the people in here. It's our job to get the people in here. It's our job to tell the people the word. You give them the word like the Lord tell you to get the word, like we was talking this morning, and it's up to them. Now, once you get the word, it's up to them. You know the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink? And nowadays, I know I feel like I should just go on down into the water and put their head in it and force to drink them. You know, that's what I think because I don't want yeah, nobody to be work. left behind. Like a cheap dream, no kid left behind. Saints should feel like that too. No saints left behind. No saints left behind. So right now we're going to have our say it for Jesus with Sister Angie. You ready, Sister Angie? I'm ready too, girl. I can't wait to hear this. I can't wait. I'm going to sit. Yeah, I'm going to help you. I'm coming. You know, it's time for us to get it right. Amen. Time is at hand. So God spoke to me. I was laying in my bed. He said, there's three types of Christians, but we all got to get it together. There's askers. And the Bible said, ask, and you will receive. But it's what you ask is what you're going to receive. And it's how you ask what you're going to receive. Amen. Some of us ask for things that we don't need. Amen. And we get upset when God don't give it to us. But he said, ask and you shall receive. But know what you're asking for. Now, seeker. Now, if I had a million dollars and I hid it in this church, or in this yard, everybody in here will get up and try to find it. Well, ain't God worth more than a million dollars? Why don't you find them? If you seek them, you shall find. It's a promise. These are promises. If you seek, you shall find. Seek God and you shall find him. Seek him before it's too late. Now, God likes a seeker. But it starts off with asking. You need to ask for salvation because you need it. 
Ask God for your soul's salvation. Seek God after you get before you get it. But this is mine. I want to be a knocker. Because if you locked out somewhere, if you locked out there in life, life is beating you up. And this was your only safe haven. You're going to come to this door and you're going to knock, 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 knock. Until somebody opened this door. And that somebody is God. You stand right there and you be a knocker. He says, stand there and knock, knock, sister Angie, knock. Knock so I can open the door for you, knock. If you knock, he promise you that the door shall be open. You can't walk in a closed door. You got to knock. Let me tell you something. If your husband or wife was out there cheating on you and you know where they was at, how many of y'all going to knock that door down? You going to kick it in because you going to get, you want to get that problem solved. Well, you the problem, so let God solve you. Knock. Knock. And stay in there. You don't leave until God says, okay, Sister Angie, I'm going to open this door for you. But when I open this door, you got to let that unforgiveness go because you not because you need this door to open. Me, I struggle with unforgiveness. Not just her. That's why I talk about it. But I got to stand there and knock until God break that from my heart. I got to stand there and knock because I already asked him, Lord, help me. Help me where I'm short. Then he said, after I help you, I want you to seek me even more. And then after you seek me, I want you to stand at my door and knock. It's Sister Angie, I need help. I'm going to do some things that I can't handle, and I know only God can do it. But I'm going to stand right here until you help me, because I'm knocking. And I ain't doing no little knock like this. Can you, if I knock like this at your door, can you hear me? You wouldn't even know I got something going on. But if I come like Popo, knock on your door, you won't want who is that? You won't get up. God already get, got up. He's waiting on you. He wants you to be a knocker. And when you knock, you will receive. She been seeking God. She been asking God, because I talk to her all the time about unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness block your blessing. Not that person, your blessing. And I get on her hard, between me and her, about forgiveness. But it's helping me myself. So she asks God in her heart. You don't know what people got in their heart they're going to ask God. She wanted God to take all this mess away. But her first step was asking. And then as she asked, she began to seek God for a change. But see, you can seek God for the wrong things, but you need to seek God for a change. And then she began to knock. Because you know why? Because God was knocking at her heart too. He said, now if you're going to be a child of mine, you got to change. You can't be walking around and hear all this bitterness, unforgiveness, no love for people. Ain't nobody in this church that you shouldn't love, regardless of what you've been through with that person. Leave that stuff alone and let God take care of it. Leave it alone. Who are you? God didn't tell you to fight your own battles. He said, I'll fight your own battles, your battles. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to treat nobody no different. Treat every, kill them with love. Love. Love conquers all. There should be nobody here that can't get along with each other. Y'all say y'all a God pay family? Right? Family may argue and fuss, but guess what? At the end of the day, they still love each other. If it was your sister or your brother, would you stop your love? Mm -hmm. You're natural. These are your spiritual sisters and brothers. Don't stop your love. Don't stop your love. Just keep standing there until God answer your prayer. And you said God answered. All that stuff is under the water. God swore she had to swallow some things that she didn't want to swallow. That's why she swallowed that water. That water was pure. 
That was the Holy Ghost she was really swallowing to get that impurity out of her. Because that's why you drink pure water. Because it flushes all that out. You may not understand. God just flushed all that stuff out of you. He flushed it all out of you. Let it go. Let go and let God. Because you just stay in that door, door and keep on knocking. Don't turn back. And don't let nobody make you turn back. Because I know me. I get mad too. And I be cussing. And I be saying, God, you know, I, I'm being real. I'm a cusser. I don't want to be. I'm trying to do better. And honestly, I am. Because I don't cuss like I used to do. I, I used to be on fire for cussing. But I'm not on fire for cussing no more. My words are very discreet now. Because I used to use some words that can cut you like a pair of scissors. But God's delivered me. And you know what God told me? I'm not going to say I'm in the construction no more. I'm not going to say that. God asked me, well, how long are you going to stay under construction? He asked me that. He said, if you got a house and you replace the windows, they're new. So you got to get some new things going on in your life. You can't say I'm under construction all the time because no guess sense. what? You're going to stay right there. Mm -hmm. God already gave you a building, which is your body. All you got to do is clean it out. I can have old windows in my house, but if I keep my house clean, that's all I need. Old windows. I begin to clean my house out. I don't have, my house don't have to be under construction no more because I'm just cleaning it out. That's what God told me. He told me, just clean your house out and stop saying that I'm under construction because you're going to stay there. This is the old church, but guess what? We still got to clean it. And guess what? We all like when it's clean because we like how it smells and looks and everything. And that's the same with people. When people clean themselves up, you like them better. So I'm not under construction. Not me. I don't know what under construction means for you. I just got to clean up. trying to make y'all think that it's okay. It is not okay. And take it from me, because I'm the one, I have a problem with change. It's just something about it. I don't know, it's just I got a problem with it, and I just stick with the old all the time, just not to go with the new, but Friday, baby. Let me tell y'all, whew, I got a, what is it, a makeover from the from the inside, from the outside in. How about that? There you go. Because it came on the outside, and I had my mouth open, y'all. I'm telling you, I thought it, I thought it was over for me. I didn't panic or nothing, though. I was like, okay, you know, so maybe it was meant for me because I was securing everything but my mouth, and that's how I am in real life. I'm securing everything but my mouth. This mouth, listen, it's terrible, you know. It's terrible. It was terrible, you know. So I think that's what the Lord had my mouth open so baby said so that holy water can get in there <laughs> and just get cleanse from the inside out because I was like oh my god did you almost drown yourself girl the Lord said uh uh you needed that because the mouth is the first thing I close when I'm around the water because I don't want to be like and that was the only thing that was open I couldn't understand it and I knew when I was going under I just didn't understand why I didn't close my mouth I closed it once the water got in I closed it I was like uh I don't think this is how it's supposed to have been but that's exactly how it was supposed to be it was exactly I mean, it went exactly the way it was supposed to be. Not how I wanted it, but how God wanted it. So I'm just going to say again, I ain't going to keep boring, y'all. I just feel like, <laughs> I'm excited. And I don't care if y'all ain't. That is it, and that is all. So now it is time for offering. All right. So um, Sister Honey and Toy, can y'all come up and take the offer for the Missionary Sunday? Yeah, y'all looking at me, huh? Honey, 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 and Tori. Yes. Y'all been looking at me like, uh. You know, I'm 
I'm just as quick country with, you know. I know, right, Mona? That's baptism talk right there, Gary. This <laughs> is still happening. All right, Sister, I mean, Sister Honey has the regular offering, and Sister Tori has the missionary. Oh, we have Your the cash app, too. And mercy Baby. Husband. He going to get y'all the cash app. I think it's uh, Agape HCC, no, dollar sign, Agape HCC 1307. Boom, look at me. I said, boom, look at me. I knew it. Go on ahead, honey. Just, you know, nudge me. This is Missionary Sunday. Every third Sunday is Missionary Sunday. And me and my husband were sitting down thinking about some things that we can do on Missionary Sunday. You know, start giving back to the community. So it's all up in the air. Once we get some final details on it, we will definitely keep the church in the loop because we want the church, the people in the community to see how we're going to move in the community. If we don't make a move, they ain't going to know we're here. Honey, say the prayer, honey. Go ahead. Amen, sister. I love you. I love you. Lord, I'm, I done got, got y'all. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to introduce the speaker of the day, and after we hear this song, we'll be no, none other than my God daddy. I look at him like my daddy, and I just was like, Lord, this should have been my daddy right here. But, you know, we get, we got what we get, you know what I'm saying? So this is my daddy. We sh I'm sharing with y'all, you know. So we're going to hear Pastor Holden bring us some awesome, uh, awesome message because last week I was like, is it over with already? I can't wait to get back here next Sunday to get the rest of this. So y'all better listen, take heed, take notes, all those great things because playtime is now over. I don't even understand that y'all don't understand it. And when he used to say it, I used to be like, oh, okay, all right. But it's 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 over. Like it's now is the time. If you don't get yourself together, ain't nobody gonna be here responsible but you because you know it. You just ain't putting forth what you know. And when God say, well done, my good and faithful servant to me, and then look at you and be like, I don't, I don't know you, don't look at me because I said, ooh, the light bulb came on and I got it. And you knew you had a switch to turn that light bulb on and you just didn't pull it. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, but I'm ready. I don't know, you know, and on, on my walk on up these steps because I heard it's like a thousand million of them. I'm steady climbing. I ain't going to fall off of it. Contrary to what people think, you know, I might stand on one step for about 10 or 15 minutes to get myself together, but I will not go backwards. That's not, no, that's not how it's going to be. Uh-uh, because I would not, like a cheaper dream, I would not be left behind. I don't care what y'all, my message from here on out is I would not be left behind, and you shouldn't want to be left behind either. What's his name, Tyree? Tyree, can you play the next song for me? And then after this song, Pastor Holden going to come on up and give us some of that, um, fill our stomachs up in our spirit. Because of you, I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy.
I'm living this moment. A sinner like me to tell the world salvation is free. There were times when I I just didn't do right. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God a praise for his grace and his what? Mercy. Because if it wasn't for God's grace or mercy, we wouldn't be sitting in these seats today. But because of God's grace and mercy, he overlooked a whole lot of things that we was doing. Amen. But let me tell you something, y'all. This is not getting, because he overlooked it or he's given us grace and mercy, don't mean you need to practice what you're doing. Last week, we talked about the holiness of God, and we are talking about the punishment of sin. And the people don't want to deal with uh, the, the, the title or the, the word holiness anymore because it requires you to live a certain way. It could requires you to conduct and carry yourself a certain way. We want to live like the world, but yet we want God to honor our praise and honor our worship. You cannot, amen, praise God, master mix and dib and dab out there in the world and expect God to still bless you and use you. Matter of fact, amen, you can still be used because the Bible says these gifts and calling are without repentance. Don't you know that you could be out the will of God and still people getting delivered, people getting saved, people getting healed? Amen, praise God. And on the day, amen, that you have to answer to God, God going to say, amen, depart from me, I don't know you. Because believe it or not, a lot of stuff that we're doing now, we're doing it that people can see us but how many know that amen praise God at the end of the day amen your your reward don't come from man it comes from God amen and the thing is today I was talking with uh, Minister Walker this morning it's time now to, to, to bring this word uncut unfiltered and tell people the truth holiness or hell one or the other you cannot amen praise God say you are Christian and still conduct and carry yourself and act like the devil Let's go to the book of Leviticus. And here, amen, God was dealing with the Israelites because, amen, he told them that once you come out of Egypt, you get, okay, I'm getting ready to take you over into Canaan. 
Amen. How many know that God have a promise that he promised every one of us? Amen. But even when you step on that ground that God has given you, there's still some requirements of you to still what? Live holy. Amen. Sometimes we forget all about, amen, the blessings don't come from man, the blessings come from God. And just because you got a good new house and a new car, amen, praise God, don't mean that's the blessing. Amen. God don't limit his blessing to material possession. God blessing is when you can wake up and you still got life in your body. Your blessing is when, amen, you can still walk around and say, I still love Jesus. Your blessing is, is that I can still walk around and still have a mind to think. You are still blessed because guess what? You may have an ache and a pain, but guess what? You're able to walk around that still what? Another blessing. I'm blessed to know that today, amen, praise God, if God call my name, I'm in a place of saying, God, I'm ready. But can everybody say that? Can everybody say that you're ready? See, but let me tell you something. You can't go to heaven with malice in your heart. You're not going to stand before God and tell, and let me tell you something, a lot of people on that day are going to say, Lord, did not I heal the sick in your name? Did not I prophesy in your name? Did not I cast out devils in your name? Jesus said, okay, you did all these things, but depart from me, I don't know you. I'm looking at too many uh, broadcasts on TV now. Everybody, all leaders now is trying to be, amen, that idol, that amen, people, America idol, they call it. Amen, that idol pastor that everybody wants. Don't you know that, amen, if we can't walk around in love and in forgiveness, amen, you're not really called by God. So let's go to the book of Leviticus because he was talking here, amen, praise God, and talking about them going, amen, over into Canaan. But he said there is a Moabite, amen, praise God, is talking about a pagan God. And what they did, the, the firstborn, they will uh, uh, present their firstborn to this pagan God to, for a sacrifice, amen, that they can be blessed monetarily-wise or uh, 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 to become very pro uh, prosperous. And all you hear now is prosperity messages. Amen. What is happening now, we don't open ourselves up to this Moabite God. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up here. Amen. And, uh, amen. And, uh, amen. Every time you hear people, they're always talking about being prosperous and prosperity. Amen. Praise God. They don't let you know the requirement that come, amen, to receive the blessings of the Lord. Amen. You got to be holy and live for God with a pure heart. Amen. David said, create in me, O Lord, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Let me tell you something. This move by God is not just into the, the secular world. It's done crept into the church. We was talking this morning. You know what? People, a lot of time, y'all, fame comes with a price. We don't realize that you sell your soul to be famous. A lot of people have and notice that a lot of people today have their children. They want their children to be so famous. And they are willing to sell them to this pagan God. Y'all ain't going to talk to me over here. You are so willing to dedicate them and present them for the world, before the world, that amen, this is the sacrifice that I'm going to present to be famous. And you don't even realize that you're sacrificing your children to a demonic force. And you wonder why kids are dying at a young age? Because we done sacrificed and gave them over to this pagan God. Notice that music has, plays a great valid place in the world today. And everybody wants to be the next professional rapper. Everybody wants to be the next professional musician. Everybody wants their children to be the next professional football player, baseball player, basketball player, soccer player. We're willing to sacrifice our children because we want fame and fortune. A lot of churches are selling themselves to be famous. Everybody wants mega ministry, but nobody wants to live holy. And when it comes to holiness, we don't want you to preach it over the pulpit because I want my church to grow. But how many know that ain't on a church if God ain't in it? I'd rather be a small ministry to know that the move of God is in the church than to be a mega church and God is not in it. And all you want to do is dance the whole service. All you want to do is speak in tongues the whole service. That don't mean that God is in your service because you see all these things. 
We want to get all, amen, praise God. We want to master mix our music and bring in the beats. But I'm used to the old hymns of Zion. When they say, I cherish the old rugged cross. When I say, I know it was Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. And then it goes on to say, none but the righteous shall see God. See that you don't need music to sing those hymns. You can sing them without music. We don't want it because they talk about their old Negro slave song. Let me tell you something. They were songs that brought your mama through. They were songs that brought your grandmama through. They were songs that brought you through when you were going through your sickness. It was a song that we're going to need today. They see Jesus because it reminds us. So let's go. And I promise you, I'm not going to be long because I'm going to give y'all a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Amen. Because you know what? I'm going to be like dippity do. A little dab of do you. I'm going to give you something that you can go home and digest it all. I'm not trying to fix you a buffet. Because, see, you know when you fix people a whole lot of food, they mess over it. Oh, I know I'm talking right up in here. Sometimes you just got to let them taste. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Sometimes you just got to give them a sample of what it's going to be like. Oh, y'all ain't got to talk to me. I'm telling you today, God is telling them, take them back to holiness. Take them back the way they're supposed to be living. Take them back the way I have set it up. God had already set it up how Christians are supposed to conduct themselves. The reason why we got so much mess in the church, amen, is because the Holy Ghost is missing out our service. So let's go to 20. Y'all don't mind me reading a little bit more. Sister Andrew, you did an excellent job seeking, asking, and knocking. Amen. Seeking, asking, and knocking. You notice that some people just come in and want to work for God and ain't ask them to change it. Don't you know you can come in and work faithfully? And not even ask God to come into your life and change you. But you sit up here and you work all your life in the church. And you think works is going to get you into heaven. If you think your works is going to make room for you in heaven, you're fooling yourself. The devil don't want you to accept Jesus in your life. And now they're trying to change the thing that Jesus is not the right name. The Holy Ghost is not the right name and all that stuff. Well, I know it was Jesus. I know it was Jesus that saved me over 40 years ago. I know it was Jesus at the age of 15 years old when I accepted him. I went in the water too. When I went down, I came up and I saw things differently just like you see right there. I, don't steal my shine. Don't steal my praise. Because when I went down, I went down, amen, a dry devil. But I came up, a, amen, changed person. Some of you all go down a dry devil, come up a wet devil. But have you changed your mindset? Because if your mindset have not been changed, amen, you would just wet down a wet or dry devil and come right back up a wet devil. There ain't no change in you. See, but the change starts before you get in the water. I know that. You're never too young to accept Jesus Christ into your life. You're never too young, amen, to walk in the power of God. You're never too young to walk in the anointing of God. I, regardless of what you did before you got to it, it's not what you did before you got to it, it's what you're doing after you got it.
over here and you can get the wrong spirit and you find yourself walking around here trying to validate why you upset y'all ain't gonna talk to me here but when you get Jesus oh, glory to God you ain't gonna let everything just get up under your skin you gonna say father I charge this to you devil you a liar you are not even gonna influence me you ain't gonna make me upset guess what I'm better than that I'm, I'm grown than that I ain't no child no more I'm a child of God but I ain't no child I'm walking in the power of God and his anointing Been over a month, refrigerator still broke. I called some people. The man hollered at me. <laughs> Thank God. Don't you know God will have you in a place that you don't even know who's sitting in your midst? It was a pastor sitting there in the appliance area. I almost said, Who? But God shut my mouth. Sometimes just because it comes to your mind, you don't need to let it come out your mouth. Because I almost said some thanks to that man on the other end of the phone. And if I was next to him, I would be like the at and I would reach out and touch him. But guess what? God will bring you in remembrance. Shut your mouth. And not knowing, the guy say, hey, Pastor Holden, do I know you? Do I know you? He said, you forgot me. Did. Don't you know the devil will set you up to make yourself look like a fool in front of folks that, amen, know you as deaconess, a missionary, a pastor, or evangelist, prophet, amen. Because when the man hollered, I was in there, I said, who the? God said, don't let it go out. Because he was right at the mouth gate. And I was getting ready to let him have it. I don't care if you are in India. Guess what? It's getting, I'm getting ready to send this thing first class over the airway. Don't you know your, your message is so fast, y'all? Don't you know that, amen, bad news get around faster than good news? So my refrigerator still broke. Still ain't got all my parts. Still having to carry ice. But guess what? The refrigerator may be broke, but I ain't. See, because a refrigerator can be replaced. Oh, y'all ain't got talked about here. Because once your word go out your mouth, guess what? People going to hold you accountable to what come out of your mouth. Y'all ain't got talked about it. That's why sometimes you need to, amen, before you say it, amen, praise God. Say, ah, sh uh 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 it's not coming out. You, devil, you're a liar. You're not going to hold me a prisoner. You're not going to cause people to lose focus. You're not going to cause people to lose focus and confidence in me because I'm not going to say it. Because some things I want to say, I can't say. Some things I can say, amen, praise God, I already know the consequences of after what I say. Amen. So sometimes you got to know that there's consequences coming with the sin for act. Look at your neighbor and say holiness. holiness. See y'all out here trying to shake your, your tail feathers and all this other stuff and you shaking what your mama gave you. Amen. Praise God. Something, let me tell you something. And some of you won't even give God a praise. You don't even tell God to thank you but you ready to get out here and get with the devil. Amen. And shake everything that you think God. Amen. But who you think gave you the ability to shake it who, the, who do you think gave you the body that you think you got that is amen all in place who do you think that kept death off of you who do you think that came and kept you healed who do you think that God that gave me the right mind who do you think amen praise God has given you who you are today amen if it had not been for the Lord if it had not been for Jesus you would have died while you're out here shaking it for the devil But you won't even put that much energy in service. Getting you to praise God is just like I'm asking you to do a root canal. That's what I'm talking about. 
until we get back to the way of holiness and get back to the way that God has already designed the church, how we support the praise. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. Because you cannot continue to commit sin and expect God to use you. The reason why God can't come into church is because you walk through the door. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up here. Then you want me to work and put all my energy. You ain't tried to do nothing to read your Bible. You ain't did nothing about prayer. Amen. Praise God. You ain't even trying to meditate. The Bible said meditate on these things what day and night. Some of y'all ain't meditating. You meditate on the wrong thing. Oh Lord, I miss my boo. God, I wish he was here. Oh Lord, I'll tell you what, God. Amen. Let me tell you something, y'all. That good thing can be your death. When God said, do not be a part of the Moabites worship, God meant what he said. You know what? I was reading it this morning, and, and the Spirit spoke to me. He said, God spoke it. Man wrote it. Now it's time for man to enforce what was spoken. God told Moses to write down the command. Moses wrote it. But why God was, Moses was before God, guess what? The Israelites was down there c celebrating, done raise up a Moabite God, an idol God. Y'all ain't got to tell me that's all it is. Raise up an idol God and why he up there in the midst of God. Amen. Just like some of us today. Amen. Praise God. You want the pastor to have a word from the Lord, but you want to live like the devil. Amen. And you sitting up there worshiping all these idol gods. Amen. Y'all ain't going to talk to me over here. Amen. Praise God. While the pastor's in the presence of God, you doing what you want to do. But God told Moses, I'm going to kill every one of them. If it had not been for Moses, in a seed and say God well, what is it going to say God you brought about it he's to kill him God had to repent y'all ain't going to talk to me here sometimes God got to go back on what he said he's going to do I am so scared and nervous right now in the time that we're living. We're living in the day of the rapture, y'all. We're living in the day of the Antichrist. We're living in the day of the one world government. You heard how this bank was talking about collapsing and how everybody, oh, let me check something, y'all. Amen. And when I hear them talking about this one world religion, oh, yeah, the Republicans are talking about that right now. Yeah, they are. Amen. Praise God. Because we're going to all have to serve and, and pray to the same God. Amen. The devil is a whole lie. Amen, pray, cause guess what? Amen, my God that I pray to is not a murderer. The God that I pray to is not an adulterer. The God that I pray to, amen, is not a fornicator. Amen, the God that I pray to and I serve, amen, do not yeah. uphold me yeah. and amen, bless me and amen and, and, and honor me when I'm doing things against his will. And I'm going to tell you how. Let's go. Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? Because let me tell you something. Instead of you growing in membership, we need to grow in faith. And instead of us wanting to grow in headship, we need to grow in the spirit. Because, amen, if God filled the church with a whole lot of people with different spirit, how are you going to handle them? Because guess what? Church is filled with a whole lot of different folk. You got whores. You got liars, you got fornicators, you got adulterers, you got people who are dabbling and dipping in different sex acts. Let, let, I'm going to show y'all. One, Leviticus 20 and 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying again, you shall, shall say to the children of Israel, whoever of the children of Israel are the strangers who dwell in Israel, who give any of his descendants to Molech, which is that deity God. He shall what? He shall what? See, that's telling you here God ain't playing. You wonder why they died so young? You wonder why? 
Amen. Praise God. All of this different drugs that they're coming here now. Uh, 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 Minister Walker just told me a good friend of his, 20 some years old, died. See, the devil know how to lure us into a place of death. Just because he is good to you, baby, don't mean that he's good for you. Sometimes you falling in love with a demon, and a demon, if you don't get free, he's going to end up killing you. Before, before a demon will let you go, he'll kill you first. for us acting like we don't know Jesus. You walking around here, amen, thinking the world owes you something. Matter of fact, you think the church owes you something. I don't owe you nothing, amen, praise God. Trust me, somebody, amen, you gonna need me before I need you because guess what? I have the connector. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Huh? I know how to walk and talk to Jesus, amen. When you get in trouble, who you gonna call? The pastor, amen. Why are you calling the pastor if you don't need me? Because pastor got connection. Child, glory, somebody. I got connection. You are lost, amen. And you need me to reconnect you back with him. So let's go on. What time is it, y'all? I'm going to let y'all go. Just like I said, I'm going to do a little dip. Uh, dip in, what are you, uh, 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 little dab of do you. Amen. Dippity do. I'm going to give you a little bit today. Yeah. Because let me tell you something, y'all. This is the day that I'm going to give you Jesus unfiltered. I'm going to give you the word uncut. And if you don't like it, so be it. You and me got to stand before holy God. And the reason why, amen, people don't want to come into service no more is because you out there partying with them at the club. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Popping tops. Amen. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. Smoking pack, puff, puff, pass. You doing all of that stuff. But when you they come into your church, you got the nerve to have a high seat and a high position in the church. And you up here talking about lifting and holding hand before God. You know you just hold up and laid up all night long. You know you. Y'all ain't going to talk. I know I'm talking right up in here, but it's all right. Amen. The same thing, amen, that God told me, I'm going to tell you. The wages of sin is still what? Ah, Phyllis, pray for me because they, they, I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, y'all, I'm scared. I'm scared like never before. Because I'm seeing all of this stuff that was prophesied back in the Old Testament is happening right here today. And the people that's going to be with the Lord, Lord have mercy. They don't have to deal with what we're dealing with today. I, I, I remember, amen, now I'm looking at funerals different, y'all. I'm like, Lord, they died in you. I'm still back here. Lord, because when I die, I want to die in you. Don't you know that some people, amen, praise God, is playing Russian, Russian roulette with their walk with God, playing Russian roulette with your life, with your anointing, amen, praise God. You can't, amen, yoke up with everybody that say they're a Christian because everybody that say they're a Christian ain't what? A Christian. So the day is uncut and unfiltered because when I was growing up as a kid, you didn't come to church 
and they know you done did something, they think you're going to hold your office. They're going to sit your hind pots down. <laughs> sit down, sweetie. Well, it's my time to usher today. No, sit down, sweetie. It's my time to be the missionary to Terra Communion. Sit down, sweetie. It's my time, Deacon, sit down. I'm telling you, those are the days that we got to go back to now. And if they don't like what you are doing and you heard from God, they ain't getting mad with you. Who gives away his descendants to Molech? He shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Oh, and I will set my face against that man. Let's talk about us leaders who know the right thing and who know the right way and who ain't dealing with the sin of the house. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. Amen. He said, you ain't dealt with the sin of the house. You ain't told them, amen, that I'm not pleased with this. So you just turn on your head and let it go on. God said, not so, not today. Oh, y'all, y'all, I, I know I'm talking right up in here. Amen. Praise God. I'm still, amen, because you're putting good money in the tithe plate. Yeah, amen. The way with you and your money. Because trust and believe, amen, God is still going to provide. We're so busy trying to hold on to people because what they can put in our checking account. Get a job. Work like everybody else. Stop quitting your job and you still making babies. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. If you say you're a pastor, amen, and you got a family and you still making babies, get a job. You sitting up here trying to pimp the church, amen, and prostitute the saints to pay your doggone bills. Shout glory to somebody. You living in mansions and driving big cars, name brand cars, wearing name brand suit, got your bling on, and they're catching the bus and walking to church. You will pass by them and go ahead and give them a ride because they ain't clean enough. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Some of y'all got a whole car lot of cars. You ain't gave nobody one. It's time to speak the truth and love. Stop trying to appease people and dress it up. Sin is what? Sin. And the wages of sin is what? Well, if he spoke it in here in Leviticus, he said you're going to die. He talked about all of this stuff. Ain't nothing changed. Nothing new under the sun. They was committing adultery back in the day. They was committing fornication in the day. They was sleeping with little children in the day. They was sleeping with animals. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. You got people today, nasty buzzers out here sleeping with the animals. Amen. You got some folks out here marrying their own dog. Amen. Some of them going out here, amen, marrying a blow-up doll. The devil is a liar. Amen. You, what can they do for you? You don't allow that small black God, that demon to take you over. Because somebody done hurt you. Wait a minute, y'all. The same one that hurt you, God can heal you. And he, God, you see the reason why you marrying certain things and indulging in certain things because you ain't gave it to God. And we better tell the truth and we better tell the truth in love. Dick, I used to be, I would tell the truth. I didn't care if people didn't like me or not. And I got back and I said, well, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. Let me tell you something, y'all. The days is over. I'm serious. The day is over. I'm scared. And anytime I get scared that God is going to pass me by, that I'm going to miss heaven because I'm trying to appease y'all people up in here, <laughs> you're lying. Amen, you lying. Amen, guess what? I'm like this. You don't pay my bills. I go to work. And I pay my own bills. So if you decide to not come to church, amen, and not give the pastor a little $2, <laughs> or put the little $2 in the plate, take y'all all to a whole hour to count $2. <laughs> Maybe y'all operating in fair faith. There is like 2000 coming on a Sunday. It's just $2. <laughs> Let 
And you take it all that time just to count two dollars. Amen. This is the time that we need to be in the presence of God, sitting up here and say, God, pour inside me what I need to stand this week. See, the thing is, we want to serve God behind doors. Amen. We need to get in the presence of God and say, pour inside me, Lord, what I need to deal with what I'm going through this week. He said, I set my face against that man and I will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Molech, to the foul Mawa sanctuary. He said, you done gave them over to this deity God to corrupt the church. You should never get to the point that you let a demon cause you to override your leader. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. Because when you do that, you're going to God. He said, You let that spirit come into the holy place. Now you can do whatever you want to do and still say Jesus. Still say Jesus. If your children, I don't care if it's your children, I don't care if it's your wife, I don't care if it's your husband, I don't care if it's your mama. It's a way that you tell the truth even to your parents. Because when my mother's wrong, I let her know, mom, you're wrong. I'm not going to disrespect my mother, but I let her know, mom, you know you're wrong. We can, we can rebuke each other without being nasty. You say, you know you're wrong. Don't you know kind words turn away anger? What, what, what did, no, you're wrong. But it can be right, but you can, the way you present it can be what? Wrong. Because when your leader says a certain thing, it's your job to respect what the leader said. Because God is, hope, I'm telling you, it's right here where he's talking to the leader. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Morlach. You allow this stuff to go on, Pastor Holden. You was praising them because they said, you know I got a record deal. You know I got a contract. No, no. You singing gospel? No, I'm going out here to the club. Baby, that ain't the right place. To defile my sanctuary. Some songs that you play in the club, well, not some songs. Songs that you play in the club, you shouldn't be playing them in the church. If they're going to the, to the club and saying stump, don't use the stump in the church. If they're singing a the song, I miss my time with you in the club, you don't need to play it in the church. Hello, somebody. Just because they got somebody say that they, the law laid it on him. Amen. The Bible said believe not every spirit. Just because they say that you better line it up with the word of God. The Bible say how can two walk together except they what? Light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place. So if you so comfortable to go out there, amen, praise God, and celebrate with the ungodly people, amen, do what you do, boo. Do what you do. But when they start shooting through the club, amen, praise God, and a bullet graze you, don't say nothing, baby. Pass, and you don't went out there, now you in jail because you rode in the car with somebody, you know they were thieves, they got sticky hands, but you going to still, but they, we ride or die, friends. Okay, you going to ride with them straight to jail. Some things you're going to have to cut yourself from. Some folks in your life you got to cut your way out of. 
Don't you know everybody that I hung with in the club, I can't, amen, dwell with them today? Because you're going to be labeled with them by association. And don't you know that the devil wants to get something on you so he can call and say, you know, you are, I guess. Look, look at all of these Republican call themselves speaking against homosexuality. And now all of a sudden, these people that they've been dibbling with behind closed doors, they're coming out and telling them about their business. See, let me tell you something. The devil will make you look like a fool. See, a lot of times you get up here and you want to uh, speak and preach one thing, but you don't know behind closed doors somebody got your message. Oh, y'all. As a matter of fact, one thing about a devil, he don't, amen, get rid of the evidence. He got tapes. He got videos. Y'all ain't got to talk to me. Huh? Amen. Matter of fact, he got, amen, everything that you ever seen. So, amen, one thing about the devil, when he get ready to expose you, he got the paper, y'all. And if the people of the land should in any way hide their eyes, matter of fact, turn it to death. Uh -huh. we, we see it, but we're going to turn our eyes uh -huh. like we don't even see it. Well, you know what they're doing, but you ain't going to say, I ain't going to, I'm going to just shut my mouth. I'm just ask the Lord, the Lord do this. No, God says it's your job to say, okay, pull them to the side. The Bible says if you overtake your brother, your sister in a fault, Amen. It's your job to go and restore them in the spirit of meekness, not expose them or pull them to the side. So you know what you're doing here, right? Amen. God is telling you, you need to get this thing together. Because trust me, when you go to them and you tell them that the Lord says, stop, you need to get this thing right. And if they don't, God, then what he's going to do, and I'm going to show you where God going to expose it. Okay. And if the people of the land should in any way hide their eyes from the man when he gives some of his descendants to Molech and they do not kill him, then I will set my face against the man and against his what? Family. God said, now I'm upset. Not just with you, man of God, but I'm mad with your family too. And because of you not addressing this, God said, I'm going to deal with you and your people. Don't you know when you don't do God's will, amen, God is not only holding you accountable, but God is holding you accountable along with your family. Because of your disobedience, it's going to fall down on your family. Then I will set my face to get that man and against his family, and I will cut him off from his people and all who prostitute themselves <laughs> with him to commit haltry with Molech and the person who turned me turned to me mediums mean them people who are summoning dead spirits I'm talking about them people who talk with the dead see I, I, I don't mess with folks who talk with dead I told y'all I don't mess with these. I don't like to do funerals. Especially when you get in there, you start trying to pull them out the cast and shut up now. Amen. Come on back here. No, they gone. Let them stay where they is. Amen. Why you left me? They gone. They gone. They gone. Don't, 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 don't start calling things in the place. I love my mama. When she gone, she gone. Amen. Don't tell them to come back. Stay right there. Amen. I see you on the other side. Cause, uh, yeah. Amen. My heart can't take some things, y'all. You come up here and you don't you talk. You know, I, I talked to mama last night. Okay, okay, now you're doing some crazy stuff here. I, look, yeah, mama told me this. I ain't trying to hear what you say. You, you, now you're talking to the dead people now. Let the dead, I'm serious. We're talking about people who are communicating with dead. Amen. Those of y'all going out here trying to find out who your next gonna be your next husband, and you going to the astrologers, amen, and you getting up here with your reading your horoscope. Guess what? Witchcraft. Well, my horoscope told me this. Medium. Y'all dealing with spirit. Some things, amen, praise God, once you know it's wrong, you better get something. You better do it the right way and stop playing around with witchcraft, y'all. I look at some of these shows, they have these people up here to talk, talk, talk to dead people. And, and, and you could be in the show and they say, uh, uh, I see somebody standing beside you. 
Okay, there's a whole lot of people standing beside me. No, they're on the other side. Other side of where? On the right or the left? Or behind me? Okay. No, uh, your uncle. What? See, now I'm gone. Because we ain't even going to finish this conversation. See, because when people start tapping into this, 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 this spirit world, let me tell you something. They summon family of dead spirits. Saul, never Saul. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they summon Samuel. Some of Samuel's dead spirit, they call it the spirit of divination. When you start calling that spirit back from the grave, guess what, y'all? And when they start going to somebody in your service and start talking through them. So the Bible is telling us when we start tapping into this spirit world, certain things, amen, praise God, what you summon is going to happen. So it's our job as Christians when somebody say, the, the, and you better make sure the Lord gave you a word for me. Because I'm going to tell you what, the, if that word ain't lining up with the Spirit of God, don't tell me nothing. And he's saying the person who turned to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. Consecrate means to be holy. Set yourself apart. Concentrate yourself, therefore, and be what? Holy. For I am the Lord, your God. God is telling Israel, stand to your feet. We get ready to go. God is telling Israel right here, I bought you out of Egypt. I bought you through the wilderness. I'm bringing you to Canaan right now. But there are some things I don't want you to touch or be a part of. When God brings you out of captivity, of sin, and bring you through wilderness, amen, where it was designed to either make you or kill you, and he break you over to that promise, God says certain things you are not to be a part of. Certain people you are not to. Let me tell you something. If it's some old folks that you dealt with in the past and you know they ain't trying to change, I'm sorry, baby. You don't have to answer their call. You was just on my mind. Thank you. I thank God for calling ID. Because I can see who on the other end. And you know what I do? I'm making my business because I got some people on my job. I put the name and I say trouble. I do. I, I, I guess it's people I put the name trouble right beside it. Then some I put mouth almighty right beside it. See, because some uh, 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 people you need to address as such, that when it come up and you see that, I put there because God done already done showed you what they're about. When you see a person name up there and you put foolishness beside the name, you know what they're calling you about. Corrupt, put it beside it. Distraction, because some things could be a distraction to you. I'm telling you, y'all, I've looked on Facebook, and I ain't going to lie, and on, on, on YouTube, I'm telling you, the devil knows what you like. And if he knows you like a lot of uh, junk in the trunk, I've seen some, 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 some females on there, boy, when they moved, that thing was just like the wave. And I'm like, oh, wow. And, and look, and this brother called me last week, and he told me, he said, I'm going to send you a picture. I said, don't send me that picture. He was in there acting like a monkey. Oh, oh, oh. I said, don't send me that picture. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. Y'all, you know, it may seem funny, but it's true. The devil know how to set you up. There's called a thing called eye gate, ear gate. But guess what? It's going to set you up when it come out your mouth gate. Because trust me, I see it. And I'm not going to say because at the end of the day, I'm still a man. Just y'all like y'all women. Y'all know what y'all like in a man. And if you see him walking around and all his junk flapping everywhere, you're like, oh, Lord. Serious business. We just need to call it like it is and stop playing around with this stuff. Sometimes we're afraid to say certain things, but it is what it is. 
and the devil know what you like. That's why men should be able to keep themselves, amen, just like we ask the women to present themselves in modest apparel. It's the same thing with men. There's enough garments out here for you to keep yourself in place. Y'all ain't got to talk to me up here. I know I'm telling the truth. Amen. You want to be seen. You going out here and you flopping everywhere. Go ahead and put, let me tell you something. I ain't playing games with y'all no more. It's too serious. And we do it because we want a reaction. You didn't put that dress on because, amen, praise God. And you No, you wanted a reaction. Talking about, I want to see if I still got it. If you don't know about now, baby, you, you, you still ain't going to know. And then when somebody say, whew, whew, wait a minute, I ain't no hoe, but you dress like one. I told y'all I ain't got to play no games now. If they ask you how much, don't get upset. You're dressing the part. And we need to tell the truth uncut. It's nothing wrong with you keeping yourself and dressing yourself moderate, especially when you got a husband. But I'm going to tell you what's happened. When you go out there undressed or underdressed, you're uncovering your husband. Uncover means to expose. Y'all are exposing your, your spouse and you don't even realize it. And if he asks you, say, baby, that ain't, that, no, that, mm -mm. take it off. I buy my own clothes. Okay. But maybe you need to find another husband then. Let's pray. See, didn't Chris pray for me, buddy? I'm serious about this thing. I'm scared. I'm scared if I don't tell y'all the truth, God going to turn his face against me. I'm not playing it. I can't tell you to stop shacking up if I'm shacking myself. It ain't going to take you 50 years to get yourself together. Like Sister Angela was saying, I'm a still work in progress. God finished the work when he first started it. It don't take God 20 years for us to get delivered. We don't want to be delivered. I know people who were strung out on drugs. God delivered him just like that. So you can't tell me. I was a cusser. And I will cuss you up and down. But the first thing God got a hold of me was my tongue. Serious business. Just like you experienced him in the water, I experienced him. And the thing is, people made fun of me and laughed at me and tell me it wasn't real. I don't mess with stuff like that. Because when my experience with God was different, and they made fun of me and they laughed at me. I'm talking my brother, my brothers, you know, they made fun at me. But guess what I'm still saying today? It's the day that we tell the truth. Unfiltered. We tell it. If they don't want to come to church no more, so be it. This is the day that God is telling us, get your house in order. If y'all got children that are out there doing stuff, they ain't got no business, warn them one more time. Let them know that God, and a lot of these children grew up in this church. And not only this church, but other churches. But they chose to go out here and run behind these pagan gods. Tell them one more time. You know better. God is telling you, get it together. Or he's going to allow something to come upon you. And I'm going to say that to y'all today. Get it together. Or God is going to allow something to come upon you. The doctor can't take off you. Your lawyer can't get you out of. Get yourself together. This is the day. The day that you hear his voice, harden out your heart. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Get it together. There's nothing wrong. 
with being holy. There's nothing wrong with being clean. There's nothing wrong with being a citizen of the kingdom of God. There's nothing wrong walking, amen, and telling people I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm born again. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You didn't have a problem when you told them that you was a bee. You don't have no embarrassment to call yourself a female dog and let somebody call you a female dog. Then you something's wrong with you. Father, we thank you now. I thank you that you taking me to a place that I I, I I fought for many days, many years, because that was the walk I didn't want to take. That was the journey I didn't want to take because I didn't want to be unloved and unliked. But today, Father. Forgive me. I'm willing to go all the way. If I have to do it by myself, I'm going to do it. But I'm praying, God, that I won't have to take this journey by myself. I'm praying that others will join this rank. They call it out. Bring your people into the safe haven. I'm praying that many will come. That, Father, that we will see you. That we would see you, Father, that we would no longer, God, be a part of the world system. To be seduced and pimped out by the world system. Father, forgive us, God, that we compromise our Christian faith and our Christian moral and our Christian standard. Forgive us that, Father, we just excel it, accept it. Just being, amen, just a normal Christian. God, I want to be a Christian that God that is going to bring change in somebody's life. That people will see me. Not only see me, but see you. Father, do it right now. God, I want to see miracles. I want to see miracles. I want to see demonic forces released and cast out. I want to see people transition. Amen. I don't care what they're going through in their, their physical body or their mental, mental uh, uh, capacity, Father. I'm trusting God that you're going to remove those things from our midst and from their lives. That, Father, they'll be able to walk and operate as normal. Father, help us to be truthful to ourselves and to be truthful to each other. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in my life right now. I understand that I asked you for this. I wanted to go back to who I used to be. I wanted to be what I used to be when I first gave my life to you. I wanted that zeal that I had when I first got saved. I lost the fire, God. My fire, God, just turned to, amen, praise God, just a kindle. But God, now the kindle is being rekindled. And guess what, God, you add, amen, the word onto it, God, that caused this fire to burn in my life. Consume things that is not of you. Burn it up in my life. Thought capacity. Heart. Capacity, those things I held, those things that I allowed to dwell in my mind to cause me to be bitter, those things that have made me a prisoner to hurt, those things that made me a prisoner to self esteem issues, those things that made me a prisoner to not seeing myself as who you called me to be, those things, God, that made me a prisoner because God, amen, wanted me to be like somebody else and not what you called me to be. Father, I have been prisoned by people's words. But today, God, you have delivered and set free. You have brought, amen, victory into my life. And not only my life, but other lives. No longer, God, like my daughter said, no longer will I question you. No longer will I wrestle with who you called me to be. Because I'm going to walk in the power of who you called me. And with this anointing that you put me, God, I'm not asking for nobody else anointing. I'm asking for the anointing you have for me for this season. Help me to walk in it. Help me to be yielded to it. Help me to perfect it. And God, everybody that come in contact with us, their lives will be changed. Unfiltered word. Unfiltered challenges. Unfiltered. So I thank you today, God. 
that you have brought me to this place. And not only me, God, you brought us all to this place. And today, God, challenge us. Challenge us. Challenge us and see if we not walk in this. Challenge us and see if we not be this. Challenge us and see if we not, amen, be an example of who you called us to be. Challenge us. And if we don't mount up to what you've challenged us and called us to be, God, convict our hearts, God. Bring us to God, this place, God, that we can't even rest. I thank you now for this change, for this opportunity, for being this witness, to being this servant, to being this man of God, to being this prophet of God, to being this vessel of God. Thank you. And this is what God is telling y'all today. Walk in who he called you to be and stop, amen, letting people limit your power and limit your abilities. That's why I love it when I can see people. Chris drove all the way from Elizabeth City. Amen. Because guess what? This is the season, amen, to be in our place. Minister Palmer came all the way from Surrey, amen, even with her condition. She done had surgery on her heart, amen, praise God, but she still pressed her way out. So let me tell you something, y'all. God is telling us now this is the season. No excuses. I want to stay in the bed this morning. I will die. Yes, indeed. I took two Benadryl last night for allergies and sinus, and the Benadryl still had me in the bed. But I had to get up and take my nephew to work, come back, and drink me some coffee. But I'm here today. I'm here today. Sometime, amen, and Lisa, she just lost her sister. They buried her on, amen, that was Wednesday, right? Tuesday, Thursday, amen, buried her on Thursday. Guess what? She's here today. Excuse time is over with. Let's pray for one another, y'all, like never before. Let's pray like never before. Let's pray like never before. Let's pray like never before. I want you all to continue, amen, to keep me in your prayers that I will be that man that God is calling for this season. For real. I'm not talking about somebody who's just carrying a title. I'm talking about walking in who God has called me to be serious and good and every leader have love and passion for people amen i'm believing god that he's going to make provision for us amen praise god to do what we need to do but i can't let this leak in the building stop me from amen preaching the gospel amen sometimes you got to preach with the leak sometimes the tile may fall on top of your head but you still should still be preaching because god is looking at our faithfulness because I believe that without faith in God, going to move on the heart of people who can make it happen. Consider yourself dismissed. Love somebody before you leave. Again, challenge yourself this week. Challenge yourself this week. You're going to be better than you was last week. Amen. Challenge yourself. I'm going to be successful Amen. this week. I'm going to be more successful this week than I was last week. Yes, indeed. Amen.